السلام علیکم اسٹوڈینٹس ہاؤ آئی یو لائک آلویز ونڈرفل فائن آئی ایم فائن تھینک یو وٹ وی ہیو بین ٹاکنگ لاسٹ ٹائم اٹس اٹس ناٹ مچ ٹائم وی ویر ٹاکنگ آن انٹیریئر اینڈ ایکسٹیریئر ریکارڈنگز اور لائیو شوز You see, when you're working with a broadcasting house, uh, there are so many ways you categorize your working. But one way is that you categorize them as uh, the interior recordings or the exterior recordings. Both, as we were talking, have their own pros and cons. Sometimes things are easy when it is uh, interior. And sometimes, students, it is difficult when it is exterior. Why it is difficult when it is exterior? Because things, variables are not in your control. And those variables which are beyond the human controls like uh, the position of light, that is sunlight. You have sunlight as a major source of light when you are doing recordings in the exterior or you are making coverage from the exterior, live coverage. You also fix reflectors. So you, when the sun is uh, not going to stop like uh, a 1000 uh, watt bulb in the interior. No, sun would keep its journey. And what happens after, a, after a, an hour or 90 minutes, and the position of the sun is changed. And in fact, the tinge of the light is also changed. Now you have studied uh, tem- light temperature. Uh, that means uh, different shades of light. When the tinge of light is changed, all camera proposition, the camera reading of colors is also disturbed. And then it is not the tinge of light. It is also the position of reflectors, which you have fixed uh, to create a soft light on one side of the talents is also changed. And that creates a lot of disturbance from the point of view of the, uh, I would say, uh, producer or say the director. It creates a problem and they have to readjust everything, beat the shadows again. And then uh, it's not the sun, I mean, uh, the wind may start blowing faster. It may raise some dust and uh, the atmosphere may be, may be a little heavier, it's hazy. And you are just 10 minutes ago or 15 minutes ago, you were having a very sharp images of the people and the locale. But now, in a matter of uh, uh, a very small time, uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or half an hour, say, things have changed. And uh, you are not getting things as sharp as before, because there is now something suspended in the atmosphere, maybe dust particles. Now, it's beyond uh, your control to clear them. And then, uh, makeups of some talent. You see, makeup stays there for some time. Makeup has its age. And when it is uh, something like 90 minutes or two hours, makeup also needs uh, retouching in certain cases. And retouching then takes time. And when you go after, when you think, uh, take the things after retouching, you find that sun has ultimately gone beyond the mountains making things impossible for you to continue working in the exterior. So there are things in the interior which are in your control like light, like uh, the sharpness of the image because the atmosphere is uh, where you in fact maintain it. And then if there is a breakdown because of any reasons, the talent, they have this facility to fall on the sofas and take a rest. maybe a nap sometime, a little nap. All right, 
So if, if you have a, a long script and if uh, your turn is coming again after an hour, there is no harm in doing so. There are uh, different factors on both sides as we have been talking. And uh, when it comes to covering the VIP movement all the more, students, again, it's a very sensitive issue. You have to cover a movement of a foreign prime minister, a king, and you cannot take liberty of doing it tomorrow because you have to cover it that day, that moment. And what happens? You have to take all your equipment outside, EXT, exterior recordings. And then in sports, you take so much pain to adjust yourself and uh, place all your cameras, microphones, all those things. It rains. I tell you, uh, as a viewer, you may be saying, oh, well, Pakistan was in a winning position and why the rain has disrupted at this juncture. You may be saying like this, but the production staff would be very disappointed because they have put in so much hard work to bring the images and the hot action from the field to you. But because of factors beyond human control, they can't do anything. But still, what I have noticed, they do not lose heart. They continue. In fact, next time they put in more effort and they try to beat the weather uh, as much they can if it is a light drizzle or if it is a, a little faster wind blowing. But again, if it rains heavily and if it is a strong wind blowing and the action is not possible on the pitch, well, I mean, there is no point uh, for the uh, for the people, broadcasting people, to bring you anything worthwhile. So what they do? They go for uh, standby programs. No standing here, because uh, we have talked about uh, what standby is. And they go for standby programs. Programs which you make to meet the emergencies. You have program ready. In case of those emergencies when the uh, transmission is disrupted because of any reason, as we're talking about, like rain. So you have programs in the studio so that you keep uh, airing those programs till that time when the umpires visit the pitch again and they decide that the match would be starting now in half an hour's time. And then you go back to the uh, stadium and from there the proceedings start. In the meantime, what you show to the people are called standby programs. Well, that was just uh, in passing. We were talking about uh, the, the problems faced by the interior transmission and the exterior and both have their advantages in the exterior you have the advantage of more openness and it's more lively it's more cheerful rather and in fact it is a it is a true uh, images which you are telling uh, showing to your uh, viewers and the people take more interest in, uh, in in outdoor recordings because they feel they're very close to the uh, the part of uh, the, the place with activities going on and they are more involved there but students, today, we are going to talk on a subject which is entirely different from what we have been talking for the last two, three sessions, like the, the photo shots, uh, the, the, the lighting arrangement, the sound, and the inter uh, interior and the exterior, all those things. They are concerning very much, rather a bit on the, the technical side of the broadcast, but you see, that is necessary for for a student of broadcasting as we have been talking one day just as a doctor needs to understand its machines to some extent he may be not be a mechanic but he if he understands those machines more a doctor uh, is in a better position uh, to handle uh, the whole exercise of medicine if he knows a bit of an ecg machine or the x-ray machines or if he knows something of pathology the testing labs the doctor is in, in a position where he may be telling the people around how to do and how to get the results, which actually help the doctor to find, to help the patient. So if the people of communication, and particularly the people who are learning broadcasting as you people are learning, if they understand things at their technical level to some extent, that would create an atmosphere for them to understand and in fact help communicate easily. And whatever you want to communicate 
if you know a bit of these technical things, you are in a great position to communicate all those things which are in your mind and you think that must be communicated, that impression must be communicated. So, but today, the topic here is, is very interesting and we have come to this chapter. They say broadcasting and media imperialism, ruling over societies with the help of modern means of communication and broadcasting is one, one modern mean and very advanced level. You see, now it's a matter of seconds to pick something, to pick some idea, pick some image, pick some voice from one part of the planet and beam it to any part of the world is a matter of seconds and make people believe anywhere in the world what has happened on some other part of the world. That much advancement has come about in the area of communication because of advancement made in the area of electronic communication, broadcasting, in the area of broadcasting. Now, the question has arisen and a debate has arisen all across the world whether some society or some individual or some group is exploiting this advancement to create a sort of uh, uh, imperialism. Uh, those days when uh, the societies were subjugated to uh, some powers on the world and uh, the, they made the colonies to the, to the weaker societies and they would have this uh, imperialistic way of uh, life and ruling. Whether this broadcasting has something to do with this uh, imperialism, whether some societies are actually ruling over other societies by exploiting this advanced means of communication is a very strong debate. A student of broadcasting cannot miss. And we will see what the debate is. Actually, we will try to see uh, what exactly the debate and the structure of uh, this communication is, uh, which is uh, making the intellectuals indulge in this uh, debate. And mind you, one thing, students, uh, at least uh, I am not going to take side which part of the debate is correct because I think I am a very small person to decide what part of the debate is correct. But what we are talking, what we are going to talk is to understand what the debate is. Uh, by and large, most people believe the debate is still inconclusive. Debate has not taken a logical end and all the people believe on this. No, the debate is going on. What we must uh, understand, what the debate is under this topic of uh, media imperialism. Now, you, you see students, it's more of a, a theoretical thing. It, it takes more talking material and uh, you, in need, you in fact need to uh, understand uh, all the uh, areas which uh, your intellect feel as uh, there is an argument and there is a point which must be understood uh, whether it is like this. Now, you see students, when uh, this uh, all started with the advent of radio, this print media had been there, but print media had its limitation. Number one, it would have a language problem. French paper would only affect the French people, the people who understand the language. Spanish, they would in fact, English, they would have their own area, Chinese, they would have their own area, Arabic, Persian, and then in the South Asia, the Urdu language and the Persian language papers, they had their own area where they would influence the people. 
there was little of uh, what we can understand uh, a globalized approach to because of this print media there was uh, hardly anything like that even uh, to the start of the last century when there were quite a few people around the world i would say thousands of newspapers but those newspapers were not in a position to hammer ideas of uh, one society on other society if you cannot read uh, an uh, arabic paper you would hardly be influenced by things written in that paper if uh, something appearing in an urdu newspaper is not understood by the people in china it's hardly going to create any difference for the people uh, in china even if you are sending these urdu papers in thousands that part of the world but with the arrival of radio things started changing a little because by way of uh, expressions now you were penetrating more into societies music i do not understand for instance english music but i can listen to it and if the tune is a composition is it lively is good i may stick to the station for some time and i may complete one two numbers i would enjoy myself if you have a good compositions here people outside the society would listen to this music so you see it was a step further from the print media but with the advent of this uh, television and the showing of image as uh, we were talking in some sitting last sitting the impression of non verbal communication is always stronger than the verbal communication jo cheez aapne dekhi hai usme फिर कोई चीज बताने की जरूरत नहीं है मसलन अगर आपने एक आप एक मैच देख रहे हैं तो आपको कुछ कमेंट्री की जरूरत नहीं है अगर वो मैच की कमेंट्री जो है फर्ज करें कि वो इटालियन लैंग्वेज में आ रही है आपको जबान समझे बगैर भी ये समझ में आ जाएगा कि एक्शन क्या हो रहा है बिकॉज द नॉन वर्बल कम्युनिकेशन इज ऑलवेज स्ट्रॉगर देन द वर्बल कम्युनिकेशन ये तो ब्रॉडकास्टिंग के स्टूडेंट्स को शुरू से ही पता है अब टीवी के आने से क्या हुआ कि सोसाइटीज का जो डिस्टेंस था उसको कवर करने की रेंज बढ़ गई अब आप अपनी सोसाइटी से निकल के एक दूसरी सोसाइटी में भी एंटर होने का आपका जो पोटेंशियल है वो बढ़ गया आप अरेबिक चैनल्स देख सकते हैं आप चाहें तो आप इजिप्ट के स्टेशंस लगा के देख सकते हैं आप लेबनान के देख सकते हैं स्टेशंस आप चाहें तो आप फ्रांस के स्टेशंस देख सकते हैं चैनल्स अगर आपकी केबल पे अवेलेबल है आजकल तो इन्यूमरेबल चैनल्स हैं आप देख सकते हैं तो जो एक फिजिकल स्टूडेंट्स डिस्टेंस था एक तो ब्रॉडकास्टिंग ने वो कर हम हम इस वक्त स्टडी कर रहे हैं उस स्ट्रक्चर को जिसने इस डिबेट को जनरेट किया स्ट्रक्चरल चेंजेस हम देख रहे हैं कि क्या हुई हम ये देख रहे हैं कि कम्युनिकेशन के स्ट्रक्चर्स में कुछ चेंजेस आ गए पहले इतना डिस्टेंस कवर ही नहीं होता था अब वो होना शुरू हो गया पहले वो वर्बल कम्युनिकेशन था अब वो नॉन वर्बल भी बीच में आ गया जब नॉन वर्बल बीच में आ गया स्टूडेंट्स तो फिर उसके बाद उस कम्युनिकेशन की स्ट्रेंथ बढ़ गई और साथ ही उसकी पेनिट्रेशन बढ़ गई पहले जो चीज आप को फर्ज करें कि सौ मील से बाहर की जो रेंज है उसका पता नहीं होता था अब तो आपको हजारों मील की रेंज की बात जो है वो पता चलनी शुरू हो गई आपको फौरन ही अंदाजा हो जाता है कि ये कैसे से हुआ आपका जो डिस्टेंस कवर करने की रेंज थी वो बढ़ गई इससे क्या हुआ अब जब फर्ज करें कि मेरा एक ब्रॉडकास्टिंग स्टेशन है और मुझे ये पता है कि मेरा ये ब्रॉडकास्टिंग जो है ये सुना जाता है देखा जाता है फर्ज करें टर्की में लेट सपोज क्यों पाकिस्तान से एक चीज नशर करते हैं वो टर्की में देखी जाती है अब मुझे इस चीज का पता है मेरे लिए अब ये थोड़ा सा आसान हो गया 
کہ میں کوئی ایسی چیز اپنی براڈ کاسٹنگ میں لے لوں جو ٹرکش لوگوں کو اٹریکٹ کر سکتی ہوں میں کچھ وکیبلری استعمال کر لوں میں کچھ ڈریسز ایسے استعمال کر لوں جو ٹرک لوگ پہنتے ہیں میں کچھ ایسی ایگزامپلس کوٹ کرنے شروع کر دوں اپنے پروگرامز میں ڈراموں میں کرنٹ افیئرس میں اور نیوز آئٹمس میں جو ٹرکی سے زیادہ ریلیٹڈ ہیں تو واٹ وڈ ہیپن ٹرکی میں اس اسٹیشن کو دیکھنے کا اکرنس بڑھ جائے گا دے وڈ فیل کہ یہ ایک ایسا اسٹیشن ہے جو ٹرکی کے بارے میں کچھ بات بتاتا ہے اس کا مطلب یہ ہوا کہ ایک سوسائٹی سے دوسری سوسائٹی کو انفلوئنس کرنے کا اب موقع بڑھ گیا جب یہ ویژول براڈ کاسٹنگ کا ٹول آپ کے ہاتھ میں آیا اسی طرح آپ کے لیے یہ اسٹڈی کرنا بھی آسان ہو گیا کہ دوسرے ملکوں کا کلچر کیا ہے جیسے آپ یہاں بیٹھے ہوئے آپ فرض کریں کہ آپ بہاول پور میں بیٹھے ہوئے آپ سمپلی مختلف ملکوں کے اسٹیشنز دیکھ کے یہ اندازہ کر سکتے ہیں کہ ان لوگوں کا بیٹھنا اٹھنا جسے لائف سٹائل کہتے ہیں ان لوگوں کا پہننا کیا ہے ان کا لائف سٹائل کیا ہے ان لوگوں کا ڈرامہ بنانے کا انداز کیسا ہے ان کی خبریں کیسی آتی ہیں ان کی ڈاکومینٹریز کیسی ہیں وہ ملک سینک کتنا ہے کیا اس ملک میں پہاڑ ہیں کبھی انہوں نے ایسی چیز دکھائی اپنے ملک کے بارے میں کبھی انہوں نے بات کی ہو اپنے ملک کی ڈاکومینٹری دکھانے آپ کو پتا چلا وہاں تو کوئی پہاڑ نہیں ہے کوئی دریا نہیں ہے اس ملک میں آپ کو یہ چیزیں ساری وہیں بیٹھ کے پتا چلی آپ بھاول پور میں بڑے آرام سے اپنے گھر میں بیٹھے ہوئے آپ سکھر میں بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں آپ چترال میں بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں آپ پشاور میں بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں آپ چار سدا میں بیٹھے ہوئے میاں والی میں ہیں آپ منڈی بہادین میں یعنی آپ کسی بھی جگہ پہ ہیں آپ کے لیے یہ آپ بہت آسان ہو گیا کہ آپ اسٹڈیز کنڈکٹ کرنا چاہیں تو آپ اوور اے پیریڈ خاص چینلز کو واچ کرنا شروع کریں تو آپ کا جو نالج ہوگا ان چینلز کا وہ ان لوگوں سے تھوڑا زیادہ ہو جائے گا جو ان چینلز کو واچ نہیں کرتے آپ کا جو اسٹڈی لیول ہے وہ ہائی ہو جائے گا اینڈ دس از آلسو ادر وی راؤنڈ اگر کوئی دوسری سوسائٹی کا بندہ آپ کی سوسائٹی کے بارے میں جاننا چاہے اس کے لیے بھی یہ چیز بہت آسان ہو گئی کہ وہ آپ کے چینلز کو زیادہ انٹینسولی واچ کرنا شروع کرے تو آپ کا جو لائف سٹائل ہے آپ کی جو باڈی لینگویج ہے یہاں پہ اور جو رکھ رکھاؤ ہے اور دا ٹاپکس جو جنرلی آپ کے زیر بحث آتے ہیں جیسے پولیٹیکل ٹاپکس ہیں فائنینشیل ہیں کوئی ایتھنک ہیں کوئی لنگوسٹک ہیں یا کوئی ٹیریٹوریل ہیں جو آپ بڑے نارمل انداز میں اپنے یہاں پہ پارلیمنٹ میں ڈسکس کرتے ہیں باہر آرگنائزیشنز میں کرتے ہیں آپ ویسے جب اپنے ڈراموں میں اس کا کوئی ذکر کرتے ہیں ان کے لیے بھی جو آپ کی سوسائٹی سے بلونگ نہیں کرتے یہ کافی آسان ہو گیا کہ وہ یہ اسٹڈی کریں کہ واٹ ٹائپ آف لائف اسٹائل از دیئر ایک تو اسٹرکچر میں یہ بہت چینج آ گیا خیر اب اس میں کوئی زیادہ ڈفرنس نہیں رہا کہ براڈ کاسٹنگ کے ذریعے آپ انفلوئنس کر سکتے ہیں اور ہو سکتے ہیں بیکاز اے بٹ آف نالج از ناؤ مور آپ کا جو پارٹ آف نالج ہے اب وہ بڑھ گیا ہے اس سوسائٹی کے بارے میں یا اس سوسائٹی کا آپ کے بارے میں اس میں تو اب دیر از نو ٹرو اوپینین ایوری باڈی ناؤ بلیو اف یو آر واچنگ چینل فرام اے پرٹیکولر سوسائٹی یو آر انڈرسٹینڈنگ or you are part of knowledge on that society is obviously is little more than the people who are not doing this exercise there is hardly true opinion now once this is settled and you see this is obvious particularly in the fashion world a fashion travel from one part of the world and uh, it influences because of its glamour and because of so many other factors you you understand uh, quite uh, 
and now better as a student of communication. If fashion travels from uh, one part of the world to another, it, it, it influences, uh, it, it keeps on influencing uh, different societies. And you would find that uh, the style of uh, trousers and shirts and jackets and neckties, which color is in, which color is out. You will have a three button jacket or you will have a four button jacket. What is in, what is out. What color of suiting is these days popular? You see, the point is, it happens. Now, there is no denying the fact that this advanced visual broadcasting has brought about some marked changes. And uh, what is happening? One point, student, as we talk about uh, the structure, before we think uh, the, which part of the debate is stronger, or which part of the debate we should be talking about. One thing is also visible as we talk about uh, TV broadcast. Students, it has been noticed that despite all this uh, strength in uh, viewership, build up of the viewers and the different channels, one thing has been globally observed that no channel, I mean all the channels which have some name and fame, they do not talk directly against the other people. For instance, uh, there are different societies, societies of Muslims, societies of Christian, societies of Hindus, societies of Sikhs, societies of, uh, on basis on the ethnicity. There are different societies. You have a Chinese society, you have a Russian society, you have a Hungarian society, you have a Spanish society, all these societies are there. What point which has been noticed by the experts, and you can also notice, they do not attack on uh, the belief of each other. For instance, there is, there is hardly any channel in the world, I think there is no channel in the world uh, which is owned by Christians and which talks against Islam. I think there is no channel in the Muslim world which talks against Christianity or which talks against Hinduism. And there is no Hindu channel, I mean the channel in the Hindu, Hindu society, which talks against Islam or which talks against Christianity. This is, this is a one uh, observation which has been made that despite having a very strong beliefs in their religions, the broadcasting people, they have by and large honored the religious beliefs of the people across the world. So there is no direct attack which you can uh, think. Then, then what the point is? Well, you see, other than religion, there have been a few points which uh, where the society's students feel there is some disturbance or you may say there is something to talk about because it's not the religion alone. There are other factors in daily life which you, which you think uh, should be restricted in one way or the other. For instance, there are channels which go for more exposure. You make term them as liberal channels or put them under any name. They go for more exposure and they know no limitation of societies on the basis of religion. There may be some Muslim countries which uh, have channels which go for exposure. You may have some Hindu channels uh, which in fact observe their Eastern values more, but then there are channels in the Hindu society which in fact don't mind exposure. The European states in particular, they do not mind the exposure. And they continue beaming 
their stations to other societies. But the societies where people feel that it's not in their interest this uh, sort of liberal uh, images or uh, talk on the sex. You may have a program from a American station or a European station or for that matter any other station which is talking something related, some problem, some psyche, something related with sex and they are talking on this topic at some depth which the people of other societies may not like. They would say, well, I mean, that is not a topic uh, to be listened to or which could be afforded or bear it to this extent. It is here. These societies feel that this strength in the broadcasting media is, uh, is trying to influence our younger generation. They people are doing it or not uh, with an intention or not, that is a separate debate. But the people who are on the receiving end, generally it has been noticed uh, all over the world students, they have this feel that the people are doing it deliberately. For instance, Europe comes under quite a heavy a criticism and the people in the Eastern societies believe that it is a mischief of uh, certain channels in the West which they deliberately beam very strongly on the societies in the Eastern countries and which carries something which uh, the Eastern society finds it very, uh, very difficult to, to tolerate or, uh, and again, uh, there is always a point when you criticize certain channels, they have a very easy defense. They say, if you think there is something objectionable, you do not watch it. You have the choice in this uh, super highway of communication and in the, where you find uh, dozens of channels at the click of a remote control. Who says stick to this channel and then criticize it? You better switch to some other channel and watch the channel of your choice and watch the channel in which you think is appropriate for you and your family and your society. This is what they say in defense. But people in the societies which feel hurt uh, because of this cultural conflict, they say, you see, it is easy to, it's not easy to control the youth watching uh, those channels. And uh, if those channels are there on the superhighway, of this broadcast, then it is going to have some bearing on the social life of uh, the societies which have their taboos intact. Well, students, uh, this is a part of uh, the structure and debate that is going on. But one point. And in communication, this point is very common in communication and that we call uh, propaganda. We are all uh, very much uh, familiar with this approach. Now, what is propaganda? In propaganda, you keep hammering one side of the story for the people who are on the receiving end, that some people on the receiving society they start believing that there may be some truth in these stories, which may be fabricated, concocted stories. But hammering one side of the story is, uh, uh, you see, it is very common. If you are watching uh, some news channels regularly, you would find that uh, certain news channels, and now uh, it is getting a global phenomenon, they, they just give you half the truth. They give you the truth. But half the truth 
you cannot deny it, deny it because it is true. But they do not give you the whole truth. Again, as a student of communication, we believe this is not an honest way of communication. If you are communicating, you must communicate the whole truth to a possible extent so that the people who are receiving the, this information, they must understand by putting all the factors together what may be the truth. But if you are telling them the half truth because you are equipped this way, because uh, you have been tailored this way that you can do this and the other people cannot reach that part of the truth and you are exploiting this fault of uh, or you see this shortcoming of the other people. So you are telling them only the half truth. But when the people at some later stage discover the whole truth, uh, only then they come to know uh, what this propaganda was. But propaganda is there. Now again, as we were talking that there have been some topics with the people talk like exposure and sex and all things like this. They influence other societies. Propaganda is uh, one area where people think someone is trying to influence them. Well, this is a part of the debate which is going on in the name of uh, broadcasting imperialism, media imperialism, broadcasting and media imperialism. They have been a talk. But we must see the other part of this uh, debate whether uh, it is, uh, is a case of imperialism or it is uh, benefiting other societies. It depends, students, from which angle you watch the wo jo kaha ghalib ne ki ye jo hota hai tamasha shab o roz mere aage isko dekhne ke liye which angle you take it all depends now the people who are involved in this debate they believe that this is in the, in the in the benefit of the of other societies let's take one or two topics for the sake of discussion. They say, the economic gain. Jho log is debate mein hissa lete hain, students. Unka ye kehna hai ki thik hai ki ye globalization ka hai, ye ek jho visual medium hai, isne puri dunia ko jho hai, by storm le liya wa hai. Lekin aap iske gains bhi to dekhen. Aap sirf iski is cheez ko dekhte hain ki ye kitna influence karta hai aur iski aap negative side ko dekhte hain. Aap iski positive side ko bhi to dekhen. Masal na aap economic gains dekhen. اگر آپ کو یہ پتہ چل رہا ہے کہ اس ملک میں گندم پیدا ہوتی اور اس ملک سے دوسرے کئی ملک جو ہیں وہ گندم امپورٹ کرتے ہیں اگر کسی وجہ سے اس ملک میں گندم پیدا نہ ہو سیلاب آ جائیں یا کوئی اور خوشک سالی ہو جائے کسی وجہ سے اور یہ بات بالکل ٹائملی ریپورٹ ہو جائے تو جو دوسری سوسائٹیز ہیں جو وہاں سے گندم کو امپورٹ کرتی ہیں انہیں کئی مہینے پہلے پتا چل جائے گا کہ جی اس سال وہاں پہ گندم کی فصل ٹھیک نہیں ہوئی ساری ریپورٹس آپ نے اپنی آنکھوں سے دیکھیں وہ اپنی گندم کے لیے کوئی متبادل ذرائع ڈھونڈ سکتے ہیں بجائے اس کے کہ انہیں یہ بات پتا نہ چلے یہ اس جو سپر ہائی وی آف انفرمیشن ہے اس پہ اس کا کوئی ذکر نہیں ہے این موقع پہ جب انہیں گندم چاہیے ہو وہ کانٹیکٹ کریں پتہ چلے گندم تو ہے پھر ایک پینک سی سیچویشن پیدا ہوگی اسی طرح جب آپ ایک سوسائٹی دوسری سوسائٹی کے لوگوں کو کچھ چیزیں دکھا دیں جیسے ٹوریزم کی چیزیں آپ ہالی ڈے میکرز کو پوری دنیا کے جو ہیں ان کو اپنے جو ٹوریسٹک ریزورٹ سے ان کے بارے میں بتاتے ہیں انہیں آپ اپنی ڈاکومنٹریز دکھاتے ہیں آپ اپنی جو ٹوریزم کے پوائنٹس ہیں ان کے بارے میں ان کو ہائی لائٹ کرتے ہیں اور 
انہیں بتاتے ہیں کہ اس ٹوریزم کے لیے یہ بھی جگہ ہے سردیوں کے لیے یہ جگہ ہے گرمیوں کے لیے یہ جگہ ہے اور اس طرح کے گزارنے کے لیے اس براڈکاسٹنگ کی وجہ سے جو پچھلے ساٹھ ستر سال سے دنیا میں بڑا اسٹرانگلی جس کا ایگزٹینس ہے ٹوریزم ہوٹل اور یہ جو جہاز رانی شپنگ لائنس کا کام ٹوریزم کا انڈسٹری کا اور فلائٹس کا جو ایئر لائنس ہے آپ یہ دیکھیں کہ ان کے بزنس میں کتنا پرموشن ہوا صرف اس وجہ سے کہ ناؤ پیپل نو کہ دنیا کے کس حصے میں وہ جا کے اپنی ہالیڈیز جو ہے گزار سکتے ہیں اور وہ کیسی جگہ ہے آر دیر ہوٹلز اویلیبل وہاں کے لوگ کیسے ہیں وہاں پہ جگہیں کیسی ہیں موسم کیسا ہے پہلے جب یہ انفارمیشن نہیں تھی تو ان کا سارا بہت محدود ہوتا تھا اب تو کئی ملک ایسے ہیں جو صرف ٹوریزم ہی کی وجہ سے بہت زیادہ دیر نو ورلڈ اوور لائک ہمارے یہاں سری لنکا ہے ساؤتھ ایشیا ان کی انکم کا ایک میجر سورس ہے ٹوریزم سوئٹزر لینڈ از اے ویری اسمال کنٹری اٹ ہارڈلی پروڈیوس میں تو میرے خیال میں واچز کے علاوہ شاید سوئٹزر لینڈ کا کچھ ہے اٹس اے رچ کنٹری کیوں پوری دنیا سے ٹورسٹ وہاں جاتے ہیں اور انہوں نے بنایا بھی ٹورسٹ کے لیے اینڈ آن ٹیلی ویژن یو کین واچ ہاؤ دا پیپل انجوائے لائف دیئر ہالیڈیز کینیڈا اور بہت ساری کنٹریز ہیں جہاں پر اس قسم کا ویش میں اگر آپ پولیٹیکل ایریا میں آ جائیں اگین اسٹوڈنٹس یو وڈ فائنڈ دیٹ دس وٹ دے کال دا انکریزڈ انسیڈنس آف براڈ کاسٹنگ وچ از انفلوئنسنگ ادر سوسائٹیز اٹ از آلسو ہیلپنگ ان ون وے اور دی ادر ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دا پولیٹیکل ایشوز which are in fact uh, uh, plaguing life in certain part of the world. Now what happens? The broadcasting houses, they invite leaders uh, from societies uh, with which uh, there is some friction going on. And they listen. First hand, people come to, in one society, people come to listen to the people, what their point of view is. direct between the leaders and the society leaders from the other society you are listening to them and sometimes the political leadership is called from both sides in one studio and they are asked to talk have a heart to heart talk and make the people understand what the issue is and where is the gray area where you can resolve these issues take the example of kashmir in in area of south asia see the broadcasting houses are doing a great thing What is the truth? They call people from India, leaders. They call leaders from Pakistan. And they also call leaders from Kashmir. They sit together. They talk to the people. And they highlight uh, what the issue is. And uh, that, you see, make people understand the, the issue in a proper perspective. And then you are in a position where you can talk uh, more sense rather than you are cynical. You have now more facts with you. Now you have more opinion of different shades of leaders. And now you are in a position to debate uh, in more rational way. And now you see it is getting a global phenomenon. So, and again, then there is another area, uh, as an area of my liking as well, and I knew that is sports. Now you see when sports are covered, from across uh, the seas and you watch them, you are also communicated something. For instance, someone is waving a banner praising your team which has gone there to play a match and you feel that the people in that remote society, uh, they have uh, very soft words about you. And uh, earlier, your feeling was that that society is perhaps uh, is a society where uh, you cannot adjust yourself and the people there are perhaps uh, are very strange to you. And Now, if it happens there, and for instance, if it is a match between India and Pakistan, and you find a banner, uh, let's suppose a match is taking place in, uh, in Pakistan. Let's suppose a match is taking place in Lahore. And during the match, you find a banner which is in praise of uh, Sachin Tendulkar. You see, the people in India, 
would have a very different feeling then. And if the match is uh, played in Bombay, and you find a, a banner over there, which is talking about the peace process between India and Pakistan, and if it is uh, in praise of some Pakistani star, the people in Pakistan, you see this one banner, would do a miracle. This is such an advanced communication. So, as we talk about uh, both sides of uh, the debate, the areas where we, we think uh, there is some encroachment is being made by uh, societies on other societies. And, uh, and this is how the debate goes on. It has its areas of, uh, it has its points which are of some concern. But then there are areas where people are in fact uh, benefiting. Now, it depends on uh, the people who take part in the debate to say whether they are being enslaved by the advancements in uh, media, particularly the electronic media. And now you see these days the internet is also involved, the online uh, communication is also involved, but we are more here in the broadcast. But then there are people who, who believe that societies are also benefiting. As we talk about the financial sector, as we talk about the political sector, even to the extent of the arena of sports, people believe that in one way or the other it is the communication is so strong and so to the point that it is fetching you, the society, desired results. And you see, in, in globalized uh, way of uh, this communication, the, the process of globalization and the involvement of broadcast, sometimes it feels that uh, there is hardly a debate about uh, this media imperialism because when we think about uh, the global issues, for instance, uh, global warming, extinction of uh, fauna, I mean, uh, some animals, some very valued animals, if they are disappearing from the planet, there have been so strong pieces of communication on the electronic media, particularly on the television, visual broadcast. The, now, the people in the remote areas, you would find, talking about the global issues, they had no idea some time ago, say, uh, some 40, 50 years ago, people were hardly talking about this ozone layer or extension of animals or usage of certain chemicals or sprays as you do it on your clothing. They were hardly talking about it. But now, you, would, you may find a person in the, in, the, in the countryside who is talking about this uh, uh, the melting of glaciers because of the rise in temperature. People are talking about the greenhouse effects. Now, you see, this has very little to talk about those, uh, those things, those we call imperialism in media or influencing the societies with the help of uh, different means and different ways of making programs which may change the lifestyle in a different society. There are plus and there are minuses. There are points. As we talked in the beginning, students, uh, it's very difficult to take a side. I'm, I'm no one to, to say that I have taken a side because debate is going on. It's an open debate. But why we have talked that much on this? You must understand what the debate is. You must acknowledge different areas and the structural changes in the communication, which have come about uh, over the years. Hence, there is a debate. Debate may last for uh, maybe for 100 years, but you must understand as a student of communication what this debate is. Once you know what this debate is, you would find yourself in a great position where and when 
to take a logical stance under a given circumstances. So that much uh, uh, about uh, this debate. If you feel any difficulty, you feel very free talking to me, writing to me, and we will be talking more on this issue. It's a very, it's a very juicy topic. I tell you, you can talk uh, as long as you wish, and uh, I like this type of topics and talking to any extent. Coming to the last segment of uh, the session, that is terminology, understanding one or two terms, and then having a pile of terms and with the help of which we can make our communication very uh, easy, technical, understandable. Last time we were talking about the setup and that setup was placing the people and the equipment on the floor at a proper point and then we use this term as the setup is ready and now you can go for the action. The talent is there. The performers are there, the musicians are there, the crew is there, everyone is, the setup is ready. And now we will talk, the next on the line is sound table, All right? You might have been knowing the, the dining table, the corner table, there are so many tables, computer table these days, very popular. Do you have one? You do. That's great. You need to have a computer for distance learning students. Wonderful. But this time it is a sound table. What it means in broadcasting? Well, sound table means a sort of a port table which you use inside the studio to give sound effects. You place certain things over there and uh, or sometimes you use the table itself to give certain sound effects, a castle effect you need to have. This is a separate table. The purpose of this table is with the sound only. You cannot use this table for other purposes because it, it has been designed for this purpose. And uh, one line more, it is spell a line. It is a term which is more dear to the producers and the directors. Spell a line, which means rehearse a line. Properly. It is not that you have learned a line by heart. You have to remember a script. No. You have to remember the line in this way. Where to pause, where to stress, where to give different treatments. Then you have to remember it completely for the purposes of delivery. Not that you have to remember it and you have to remember this line. You have to remember it in the way you have to deliver it. That is where the producer wants you to spell a line. You have to proper three cases spell karne, means to proper three cases yad karne, uski sari punctuation ke saad, uh, students aapne usko yad karne. Agar aapne sari punctuations ke saad aapne usko yad kar liya, that's fine. Agar aapne nahi kiya, to director may be asking you, okay, gentlemen, please spell the line properly. Aap isko puri punctuation ke saad kare. This much, for the day, next time, with a new topic, new discussions, new sharing of knowledge. Till then, students, it's Khuda Office.